In this problem, we're told a truck covers 40 meters in 8.5 seconds while uniformly slowing down to a final velocity of 2.8 meters per second. Find the truck's original speed and its acceleration. So let's go ahead and draw what's going on here. So we have this truck on this road, right? So our, here's our truck. And so we know it's going to travel a distance of 40 meters in 8.5 seconds. So it's going to travel this distance right here. Let's call it 40 meters, right? And then the truck's going to end up here, right? And so we know it's going to do this in 8.5 seconds. So the time it takes right, is 8.5 seconds. Cool, so it's gonna travel along here, like this. And so we also know the truck's final velocity, right? So it's gonna slow down to a final velocity of 2.8 meters per second. So in the beginning, it has some velocity, we call it V sub zero, initial velocity, which we don't know, right? And then at the end, it's gonna travel at 2.8 meters per second. So it's velocity here, which we just denote by V, or V final, whatever you wanna use, is 2.8 meters per second. Okay, so this right here is what's going on. And so we know it's going to slow down over this time and then become this speed. So let's go ahead and solve. So uh, the first thing you want to do for these problems is recognize that they're kinematic, right? Constant acceleration. And so what we're going to do is use these kinematic equations here, which you use, uh, which are like motion solving problems with constant acceleration. So the first thing we always do is lay out the variables we're given uh, based on these equations. So you just want to write given and then write down the five variables. So the five variables are delta x, v, v sub zero, a, and t. So if you look on the right, those are the five variables in those equations. And so we want to determine whether or not we have these variables so we can actually solve. So what is delta x? So delta x is your change in your position. So throughout this interval, what's its change in its position? Or how, long, how far is it going to travel? So we know it travels 40 meters, right? So its change in x is going to be 40 meters, right? So we know that. V, what is v? So v is its velocity. You can write v final. Generally, that's what v means. Uh, it's just its final velocity. So what's its speed at the end of the interval? So if at the beginning, we don't know how fast it's traveling, right? And then at the end, it's going to travel 40 meters, and then it's going to be traveling 2.8 meters per second. So its velocity is just 2.8 meters per second. What about V sub zero? So in the problem, they're trying to find uh, the truck's original speed, and that's what V sub zero is. We don't know what it is, so that's what we're going to be using, to, or we're going to solve for, for A. So we just put question mark because we don't know. What about acceleration? So B wants us to find its acceleration. We don't know how much it's going to, or how much it's decelerating, right, for A. So we don't know that. So we're just going to put question mark because we're going to solve for that too. Uh, and then for the last part, t, uh, we do know t. So the time it takes this interval, right, is 8.5 seconds. That's how long it takes it to travel 40 meters. So 8.5 seconds. Cool. So now we have all the uh, variables, and we can determine which equation we want to use for each part. So for a, we're trying to solve for its initial velocity. So just say v sub 0, that's what we're going to wanna, want to solve for. So, right, because that's its initial speed. So how do we want to solve for this? So what you want to do is look at the kinematic equations and determine based off the variables you're given, which equation is easiest to use. Okay, so uh, if you look at these equations, right, notice how three of them contain A. And we don't know A because we don't have it yet, right? So this one, this one, and this one, we can't use, right? So we'll look about this one. We have delta x, we have v, we're solving for v sub 0, and we have t. So it's v sub 0 is the only variable, right? So meaning we can just solve for it. And so this is the equation we're going to use, right? So that's why we use it. And so uh, keep in mind when you solve these, the units have to line up. So this, if this is in meters, this has to be meters per second, right? Or it has to have some time. And then if these, uh, the seconds have to align with the unit on this one, right? So they're on the right units. Just make sure when you solve these, they are. So it's just going to be delta x equals uh, this equation right here, right? So uh, the delta x is just 40, right? I'm just plugging in the variables now. Equals v, which we know is 2.8 plus v sub 0, all over 2, multiplied by t. So what's t? It's 8.5. So how do we want to solve for this? So what we can do is just divide both sides by 8.5. So 40, divide that by 8.5. Right, so if you do 40, divide it by 8.5, you're going to get 4.70588 is equal to 2.8 plus v sub 0 over 2. So if we multiply both sides by 2, right then we'll get uh, this alone so it'll be 9.411764747 and so on it's going to be equal to and then we just have 2.8 plus v sub 0 so if we want v sub 0 just minus 2.8 to get it by itself so minus 2.8 so when you do this you're going to get v sub 0 is equal to 6.6 uh, 61 6.611765, we'll just say I'm rounding it, uh, but yeah, so this is right here is going to be a speed, 
I'm just gonna round to 6.6. .6, so it isn't gonna be the most, uh, right? So it's not the most accurate, but if your teacher wants you uh, it to be more or not rounded, just leave it in this form when you solve, but I'm just gonna keep it at 6.6, .6, right? So 6.6 .6, uh, meters per second, that's gonna be the units. So 6.6 .6 meters per second, that's V sub zero. So that's its speed right here. And so that makes sense, right? We can confirm because we know it's gonna be slowing down. So it makes sense that the speed in the beginning is faster than at the end. So 6.6 .6 meters per second, that's gonna be V sub zero. Okay, so now we have every other variable except for A. So this right here is your answer to A, by the way. So for B, we wanna find its acceleration. So for now that we have every variable unlocked, we can use any of these equations. So the easiest one in my opinion is just this one right here, V equals V sub zero plus A times T, because it's the shortest, so that's the one we're gonna use. So V equals V sub zero plus A times T. Notice what we have, we have V, we have V sub zero, uh, we don't have a, but we have t, right? Because we're solving for a. So what we can do is just go ahead and plug stuff in. So v sub zero is, uh, or v is 2.8, is equal to v sub zero, which is 6.6, .6, plus a, which we don't know, times t, which is 8.5. So let's go ahead and solve. So minus 6.6 .6 to the other side. So you have 2.8 minus 6.6, .6, which is minus 3.8, is equal to 8.5a. So if you divide both sides by 8.5, right, because we just want A by itself. And then, so you do minus 3.8 divided by 8.5. So A, if you do this, you're going to get minus 0 0.447. So the units on this is meters per second squared. That's what you measure it in when you're using meters and seconds. And then you can round if you want. So you can just say minus 0.5 or however your teacher wants you to do. Just make sure you follow what they want to do. Uh, but yeah, so this right here is your acceleration, right? So it's decelerating, we know that. So that's why it's negative. The negative sign indicates that it's slowing down versus positive would be speeding up. But yeah, so this is your answer to B, right? So uh, it's acceleration. So this was A, this was B. But yeah, so keep in mind this was V sub zero. But yeah, so these are your two answers and hopefully you found this useful.